Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to Storybook Land. Today we will visit the miniature homes of many of Walt Disney's most beloved storybook characters. It looks as though we're about to be swallowed by Monstro, the very same whale who swallowed Pinocchio. But don't worry, boys and girls. When Pinocchio built an enormous fire inside Monstro, the smoke made him sneeze so hard, he huffed and puffed and blew his tail right off. And today, this is our magical entrance into Storybook Land. Just ahead and to the right are the homes of the three little pigs. The one of straw, the one of sticks, and the wolf-proof one of bricks. Over there on the banks of the river lies a quaint little English village. If you look carefully, you can see the rabbit hole where Alice followed the white rabbit down, 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 and into Wonderland. And just to the right is London Park, where Peter Pan taught Wendy, John, and Michael how to fly to Neverland. Directly ahead is the city of Agrabah, a city of mystery and enchantment. High above is the Sultan's Palace, and down below is the busy marketplace, where Princess Jasmine and Aladdin met for the first time and fell in love. As we travel under the rose-covered arches, you may recall when Aladdin returned to Agrabah and took Princess Jasmine on a magic carpet ride to a whole new world. This is the very same cave where Aladdin and Abu discovered the genie in the magic lamp. Legend says that if you close your eyes and make a wish inside this enchanted cave, it might just come true. Beyond the seven hills and past the seven waterfalls lies the charming forest cottage of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. High atop the Storybook Hills is Cinderella Castle. If you listen carefully, you can hear the chimes of the tower clock. At the stroke of midnight, the fairy godmother's magic spell was broken, and Cinderella's carriage turned back into a pumpkin. On the left is a giant patchwork quilt, inspired by the Walt Disney Silly Symphony Lullaby Land. It is made up entirely of colorful desert plants and is held together by giant stitches. Yes, boys and girls, all of the miniature trees in Storybook Land are real. Thanks to a magical formula known only to Tinkerbell, they grow only one-eighth of an inch per year. Further down the river is Toad Hall, the ancestral home of Mr. J. Thaddeus Toad, Esquire. And on the water bank down below is the little home of Mr. Mole, the busy caretaker of Toad Hall's all nine towering chimneys. Up ahead are the three Dutch mills from the Silly Symphony, the Old Mill. The mill in the center is where the animals took shelter during the Great Storm. Below the Swiss Italian Alps lies Geppetto's village. From his workshop window, Geppetto the toy maker made a wish upon a magic star, and his dream came true when the blue fairy brought Pinocchio to life. Beyond the tunnel is Prince Eric's ship, 
and the sandy shore where the little mermaid took her very first steps on land. Through the waterfall on the left is the enchanted sea kingdom of King Triton, where Sebastian, Flounder, and all the little merfolk live. Well, boys and girls, it looks as though we are nearing the end of our journey. I hope everyone enjoyed their visit to Storybook Land, and you'll come back to see us again real soon. Please watch your step as you disembark. Bye-bye.